Wait. Woo! How about that? Wow. Uh, thank you, uh, Scotty, for allowing me the opportunity to speak to a, a room full of winners, uh, so many great people. And uh, I first want to mention a couple things. At some point, but you have to promise to put your phone back down. Uh, if you go on Google or Google Map, I'm not an IT guy. That's why I have a great one. But we need to obviously find the people to do the things we can and bring them on board and embrace them in our business. I was fortunate enough to do that. But Google and look up Meridian, California. And when you do that, if you scroll east about 10 miles, you'll find Yuba City. So if you don't believe in divine intervention, <laughs> how in the world could Meridian East and Meridian West actually end up together and why at this point in time, right? And I will tell you um, one thing uh, for sure, and, and, and I, I'm compelled to share, and so I will. Um, I, I am most impressed by the great level of faith just it's amazing with Benji, Scotty, Brandon, uh, pretty much everybody, right? And I probably, I have faith. Um, I probably have the least um, amount of faith and commitment of everyone in this room. And I find that fortunate because when I'm around people with such great faith, I feel like I'm the luckiest one in the room simply because... I get to experience all those things you guys already have as it grows even more in the coming years. And I'll share a story with you about being on a mountaintop with lightning going off all around me. And I'll share certain things that let us realize why, um, why we know we have faith. And then we're around other people at certain times in our life. And it just is divine intervention. And before I go too, too much further in depth, where's David? Is David in here? Yes. Is he? Yeah. Well, maybe he can hear our applause, but I'd just like everybody to give David a massive round of applause. And I'll tell you why. Because, did, David, did you hear that? Look at that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was the moment. That was the moment. Our applause drew him through the door and into this very room. That or he's an affection hound and he sniffed it out. Right? So, so David, thank you um, for the logistics. Because as much as we may grumble about how to get to Meridian, Mississippi, or Meridian, California, which isn't much easier unless you live in Yuba City and it's 10 minutes away, um, you make it easy for us. You know, the agenda and the organization and to run what has become the world's greatest three ring circus, if you look at all the different rings and the acts going on around here, um, you just do it with style and grace, man. So uh, that is just awesome and deserves another round of applause. Uh, and there's another problem I have. So yes, um, I helped build an agency to over $75 million of annualized premium. And here's the secret, um, I never intended to. Right? All I was was a 24-year-old kid who came out of the Navy, loved serving my country, went in to grow up and see the world and, and get some experience, and boy, did I ever in a number of ways. But when it was time to go, it was time to go on to the next thing. I just needed to make money, got brought into the business. Hopefully, I'll have enough time to share that with you. Um, but I just wanted to help people and get out there and, and earn a living at the same time. And it evolved to all these things because I was fortunate uh, enough to be in the right place at the right time. And what I want to impress upon you is that if you focus on things other than the money or a particular number, if you focus on the mission, if you focus on the passion, folks, all that other stuff comes and it'll come bigger than you can dream. I'm speaking from a life experience. Absolutely. And I will tell you, it feels good when it happens if you did it for all the right reasons, right? And some people will tell other people from there, say, oh, we were doing 100 million a year, right? Because it's pretty common in our industry to overinflate everything. I will tell you, in fact, it was about 75. Um, and I will tell you what happened with that. I actually got burned to the ground because I believed in culture and relationships um, and uh, stood strong for that when things started to change there. And as much as I'd say five or six years ago, I was burned to the ground, gutted, and all these other things, I can tell you today I was liberated. Because if not for all that, we wouldn't have this right here, right now. 
right? And I share some of these with you, but what I really want you to do is think about the own, your own challenges. You've already been prepared for everything you're going to endure related to this business. Because nothing you're going to run into in your pursuit of success in this business, in your pursuit of helping others, is as tough as at least one thing you've faced in your own life or faced with a family member. It's not. You're already well prepared to embark upon this, and there should be no fear in that. You've experienced tougher. And you'll experience other tough times in your life as well, but you'll be able to handle them. And if I could encourage you to do one thing, Make sure you handle them with great, strong people around you, whether it's through your organization, through your community, or any combination of the above, right? Because if you can do that, together you're stronger. And you can impact others when you do that too, because they're going to need you whether you realize it or not. And that's what this business brings us. It's not about the money. It's not about the volume. It's not about any of that stuff as much as it is about the relationships and how we grow in and outside of the business. So. With all that said, I got to stay on track. And here's why. Because when you spend 27 years in the business, you come in as a 24-year-old kid out of the Navy, and you're fortunate enough to have success as a producer, and then they want you to teach others, and so you do that, and then they want you to run things nationally, and then you kind of own it, and then all these things are going on. You gain a ton of experience, good and bad. And the only thing I've ever cared about as I look back over 27 years was the people that I could impact. It doesn't matter that I know what I know. It matters that you know what I know. And as much as I give it to you, here's the one thing that continues to crush me that I work on all the time. As much as I know that if you can embrace everything I can give you related to this business, because all of you can teach me a lot about life and relationships, and I expect to learn that from at least some of you in the coming years. But it, as much as I could give you, some of you won't take it. Some of you won't run with it. And I don't know what I missed. In working with producers, the hardest part for me is the 80%, right? Because we want them all to know what we know. We understand what it can do. We know there is good or better than us. It can happen. It has happened. I'm living proof. I'm a 24-year-old squid. <laughs> Came out and got into this and built a machine, right? With the help of others as well. So that's the hard part for me. So don't break my heart. I, I want all of you to do your best to not just embrace something I may say today or as much of what I can give you today or in months or years or private conversations because you can call me anytime and ask me anything and I'll just give you the honest answer from what I experienced at that same point in time in the business or the industry. And you can take and do with that what you will. I just hope all of you Take it, and I wish all of you would, right? So, so here's my deal with you. I trimmed down my presentation today in the interest of time because it's tough to listen as great as the speakers were, uh, and I want to address all of them here in a second. Um, I trimmed it down, but I did that to free up more of your time, but I, I want you to promise to give me something in return. Will you do that? Yes. All of you promise to give me something in return? I'm going to spend my time doing a little bit of reflection. So I'll leave this by example, but you have to promise me that you will reflect as well and that you'll take that with you and leave bigger and stronger because you now aren't just you anymore. You're Benji, you're Brandon, you're Frank, Mike, and hopefully a part of me. Certainly already Scotty, Teddy, Scott. I could name them all. It's ridiculous. Every time I turn around, now Jay's here. You know, there's a new person that drops out of the sky that's the most awesome person I've ever met. You know, I was like, whoa, there's another one, right? I can't handle it. It's too much good. So I want you to reflect and take that with you. And I'm going to do my best here to lead by example. Last year's speakers, there was a common theme of perseverance. Um, it's funny, oftentimes, and I'm going to tell you this, it's more important, and I, I, Benji, you may or may not agree with me, I think you will. Benji would, I, well, I'm going to just speak for me. 
I would tell you, forget my name, but remember at least two things I said that can impact your life, your career, in a positive way. Don't worry about who I am or who I was. Even if it's, you know, I don't remember that guy, but I remember a couple of things he said. That's what matters most. True? I agree. So last year, I don't remember the one guy who spoke, um, his name. But I remember, I know he's successful because he built an app and he builds apps and he was on Air Force One and all this other cool stuff. But he was doing something great, removed himself from it, believed in something, and never wavered from it to the point where they were borrowing money from their parents. I think they were growing their own food out of the backyard and living in the car almost, right? So, and, and I'm, I'm embellishing a little bit, but not much. But the message was persevere, endure, right? And the other speaker, the great football player, Mr. Moore, uh, his message about the lights on the football field his friend would pick him up and put the lights on the field so he could train and practice in pursuit of a goal. You know, we master a system and we scale down that presentation to make it so ridiculously easy because we know people just hate to commit to learning it. And if they did, they'd be so strong and so successful. And we spend all our time trying to say, if only I could take it from two pages to one, from one to a half. You know, how about if I could just inject it in their head? We're working on that now. <laughs> because we want you to succeed. Right? So while we're doing that, how about all our producers take what we've already refined and be strong? So I listen to those messages. I'm like, if, if, if this guy could live out of a car, and if this guy can have someone pick him up at 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning because he has no transportation and have him shine the lights on the field because he wants to do that training, my gosh, if I'm an incoming producer, I could certainly spend a day or a week learning a presentation because others have succeeded with it and will support me in it, right? So those are the reflections I had from last year's speakers. And let me tell you what, as good as they were, this year's speakers, wow, outstanding. Uh, so here's a couple of things that I took. Brandon, when you talked about uh, John Maxwell, you talked about eights or nines, you know, it's funny, um, I thought about this. I might have thought I'd gotten to the point where I was an eight or a nine as a leader. And when I got here and started interacting with some of you, I realized that um, much, like, um, much like the faith issue, I've got a lot of fun ahead of me because I'm probably about a six right now. You know, I mean, if you're in a room... If you're, if you're around a bunch of fours and fives, you're like, man, I dominate these people. You know, I have mastery. I am a nine. Actually, I got to call John Maxwell and help him rewrite that. I think I've achieved, I've achieved a 12, right? I'm, I think I'm up. He doesn't understand the numbers I'm at. You know, there's got to be new numbers for how amazing I am. Well, you might just be in a room that uh, you, you're, you keep bumping your head against the ceiling, so you think you're at the top. So what I say to that, it challenges me. It's been an eye-opener for me, and, and it was a connection while you were speaking. It's important when people speak to draw that personal connection because we're speaking for you, not for us. The speakers want to communicate with you, and so you need to hear what they say and take something that relates to you and own it. For me, it was explore more rooms, right? Explore some more rooms. Don't be afraid to explore some more rooms. Um, learn additional ways. What we tend to do, think about it this way, right? We do what we do, and we get what we get, and we're at where we're at. You know, we all eat well, we all have clothes, we all have a roof over our heads, so we're having what we would determine as success. But it can cause us to polarize. Because if there's a way to do twice the results we do in half the time, but it requires an openness to learn that way, what if we're afraid that we'd lose our mojo for what we currently do if we incorporated additional ways, right? And so we can polarize. Don't. That room you've created, it's never going to go away. You own it because it's really right here. You own that room. You can always go back to that room. If you open the door to a room and there's a bunch of twos and you're like, ah! and you run back, right? You've got your room of fours and fives. If you open a room and it's fire, right? And you're like, whoa, 
but, but you've got to check out a couple other rooms. And you know, maybe you don't have to. Maybe divine intervention will be such that, much as I was fortunate, you'll get shoved into a room like that, and you'll be like, whoa, I actually suck at a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> Which is cool, because now I can get better, and it's fun, right? So thank you for that. Um, start a movement, right? I want to say, start a movement is a powerful statement. Um, but I also want to say, be part of one. Mm -hmm. Be part of one. I don't know if you guys know it, but just by being here, you're part of a movement. This is happening right now. And what you don't want to be is left behind, right? Let's see if I can do this. Nope. Can you feel any of that? Can you absolutely feel that right now? Because I can, and I've done this 27 years. I do have some credibility. I don't like talking about what I've done because anybody truly can do it. But I have the credibility to draw from that experience. I've been part of what people would have considered great. I've been part of what people would have considered beyond their wildest dreams, the pinnacle of success, all these other things. And I'm going to tell you what. It didn't have anywhere near the accelerating heartbeat of what we are attached to now. I have not seen anything like this. And folks, I'm not selling that. I've done it. I don't have to sell it. I'm passionate about it. I have no problem telling it like I see it. And I'm telling you right now, you are on the cusp of the opportunity of your lifetime. Now, here's something that you need to know. Actually, maybe someone can answer this for me. How do you know, I will tell you not to miss this opportunity of your lifetime, but how do you know you did miss the opportunity of a lifetime? How do you know? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Here's the funny thing. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know you've missed the opportunity of a lifetime. Why don't you know? Because you missed it. <laughs> you literally have to be blind and deaf to not see what's going on here. And you have to have no, I mean, that hurts, ow, right? You'd have to have no feel whatsoever to not even feel, to not be able to feel what's going on here. Embrace it. Shed your current skin and grow. Continue to grow. And I'm going to tell you what. I just got here like, what, six or seven months ago? And it's already gotten better exponentially. It's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. Will it go like this? Not in our business. It'll go like this, and you'll have a moment like this. You'll be like, ha! Ah! And then it'll go like this. You'll be like, wee-hee! And then it'll go, Ur! and you'll be like, Err! And then you'll be like, yay! Oh, my gosh, right? These are checkpoints or resets for you to be able to reflect and find that next room. Go to that next level, right? But what it will do is go from here to here. And I don't have arms long enough to explain this one. I've never seen anything like it. So I would encourage you to be a part of it as much as you can. I've never seen this much talent amassed in one place. And I mean both from a personal advice standpoint, and certainly an industry advice standpoint, ever. So yeah, create a movement, right? But for me, as I begin to create a movement for and with One Life, I first want to be a part of that movement. And I am. I'm feeling more a part of it every time I interact, just being here, being with people, being with all of you. Uh, so thank you. And, uh, and leaders, submit to other leaders. I'm getting a lot older now, so my memory leaves me, right? But um, it was along those lines, right? And I think that was Maxwell, too. Right. Did you come up with anything yourself? No. Was it all Maxwell? <laughs> come on, man. You plagiarized him. <laughs> so, so 
leaders submitting to other leadership, right? Um, first impressions are big. And generally, in our business, you trust, I'm a field guy, so I trust my gut. Um, and usually you know. I mean, I've done this long enough. I've been around enough people in our industry. Man, 90% of them are phony. Um, they're posers. They're full of bull. They're materialistic. And it's fun to watch because they don't get it. And any success they have is a house of cards and it'll collapse. It will. Chasing those things will cause you to collapse. And so when I met Scotty um, in February, 15 minutes, right? It was good. Now, I did end up owning part of that organization I helped build from scratch. And I think we can all agree doing 75 or 900 million, whatever those people made up, it was about 70, 75 million. But that's a big number. I mean, that's not bad that people wouldn't go, yeah, pff, I've done that, you know. It, it's a nice accomplishment, right? Um, and many would say, okay, you led the organization. Cool, I did. So you were a leader. Yes, I was. I take that responsibility um, and everything that comes with it. And I own that. But when I got to meet Scotty and I got to feel what he was creating and saw the talent amassing around him, um, I tell you, it took me 15 minutes. And I subject uh, to his leadership. And I've told him for the programs that we're developing, you are the CEO. I don't mind, you know, I'll be that other guy. I have no problem doing that because egos kill success. There is no place for them. Get rid of it. And attach yourself to people you think are great and get closer to them. You don't have to be the guy or the gal in your organization. And if you're lucky, you won't have to be, right? And so I can't, and, and I can't tell you, uh, it's, it's a great feeling. So I thank you for that, uh, and I have no problem with that. It took me five minutes to go, this guy's better at all this stuff, frees me up to do all this other stuff. One and one makes eight. Done, <laughs> right? I like eight. A lot more than I like one. Bigger. So thank you for those things. And folks, that's what I mean about reflection. How does what they say resonate with you? And, and what's it going to drive you to? Because if you just laugh a little, maybe write a couple things down that you can't even read later because you forgot why you were writing them down, or say, wow, that was great listening to those people, then you haven't done anything for yourself. You've got to take action with this information and obviously reflect on how you connect with it and what it means in what you're trying to accomplish. So, Frank, and your lovely wife. Do you want to shake your hand? Uh, yeah, I'm a hugger. <laughs> right. Thank you for last night. Um, Transparency. You know who producers can buy into? See, the systems work. The systems work. The business works. The industry is better than anything anyone will ever come into. There's nothing a producer can come in and do that would be potentially more successful financially or emotionally than the business we're in, right? But they have to buy in. It doesn't matter that we know that it all works and that it will be life-changing. It only matters that they know. And what really helps, I've learned over the years, to get people to buy in is trust. There's nothing wrong with letting them see who you are, that, that you're not perfect, but that you're driven, that you're relentless, that you're there for them, that you're you. I would happily work for your agency because you're transparent. You guys are awesome and everybody's the same there and they all feel important now I don't know that for sure but I'd bet you I'm right because they reflect you right so thank you for that because it reminds us to be transparent a lot of you and Michael talked earlier are building teams right you're trying to build you want to be a builder we'll talk about why in a minute but why you do I mean I'm curious why in the world you'd want to do that um, <laughs> 
but seriously, some of it you watch. But, you know, um, when you are going to build a team, it's important to do it for the right reasons, to care about the people, to be transparent. Let them see you and see that it is a job, but it, it yields great rewards, and they will buy in more to you, and your team will grow faster and have greater success, right? So that was awesome. Um, Mike, great system. Uh, really appreciate your beautiful, clearly defined why. Um, I, I thought that was uh, great. You know, we talk, everybody talks about their why. Find your why, write down your why. Tell me your why. You know, every organization throws that out there. But who leads by example and can actually describe to you their why and then put a picture of their why up there? Now, and I'll tell you what I felt. That was on the level. When that guy's having a tough week, when he got three no-shows in a row, when agents are giving him grief and telling him everything that's wrong with this business, when he gets up and goes, man, why am I even doing this anymore? I'm going to go to work at Starbucks or wherever, anything but trying to run my own company with a bunch of naysayers, right? He's got a clearly defined why. It's not your why this moment. It's your why every day of your life. Because your why matters when you're down and out. Your why is easy when you're winning. Your why is important when you're down and out, when you're struggling. When you need to be pulled back in the game, you need your why. So clearly defined why is outstanding. And one of the things I'm going to do with the people that I'm working with is make sure that they actually send me a picture of their why moving forward. And it doesn't have to be an individual. You know, everybody's why is their why. Where they're at in their personal life, spiritual life, career is their business. But they're all coming to me because they want to succeed. Maybe in all those areas. But in that moment, maybe their why is a new car. Maybe their why is their first home. Take a picture of it. Maybe their wives, their wife, their children, what have you. It doesn't matter what your why is. You need to send me a picture of it, right? And now when they're struggling, I'm just going to email them a picture of their why. Say, remember this? Don't let it down, right? So thank you for that. And uh, Benji. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Uh, it was interesting. Scotty had asked me to speak, and I'm like, really? OK, whatever you want, dude, I will do. Uh, but there's some great speakers here. So you know, I look at the lineup, and I see that I'm last. And I, I, you know, I, I, now I really know why you did it, dirty dog. So I see that I'm last, and I'm thinking, well, they say save the best for last. And obviously, that's patronizing the last person. You know, Usually, who you pick, when we pick divided teams and play baseball, kickball, whatever, the last pick, it's not like, and, and, uh, and the, you know, anybody, me, <laughs> last pick, you know, it's like, and uh, I guess I'll take him, but, you know, we get to bat first if I got to take him, right? <laughs> so nobody ever says, oh, yay, I saved the best for last. I, you know, we all fought over picking you last, right? Uh, so I know, I get it. And if I didn't get it, I had a book given to me. And I love, Frank, what you said about reading. I'm like you. The last time I read a book before I started hanging out with these people was when I was forced to, right? I mean, I had to. And now I find myself reading these books and then reflecting on how they connect with me, how I can connect with them, and, and what it means. Um, and, and so I started reading books. And all, now I got people showing up and just dropping books in my life. Not even one life people. Now all of a sudden there's this open door for divine intervention in these books. Some guy uh, flies in from New Jersey and he spends the whole day with me. Very impactful person. And we have a great exchange and he's looking at getting into the business and he runs other successful companies. And he's like, man, I got to have you read this book. You know, I'm reading and here's this book. And he gives it to me, and I'm like, great, you know, I'm, probably, and I'm reading, so I'm into it. And, I'm, and my frustration now is not that I have to read, it's that I, I don't have enough time to read these things, because it's fun, and it's impactful, right? And so I'm going somewhere with this. Here it comes. 
I'm on the plane, great time to read, nobody's bugging you, your phone's not going off, because I don't know how to connect to Wi-Fi and do emails on planes anyway, and I haven't learned on purpose. Because you've got to have a time to decompress and just think about life in general and get your battery charged for a little bit. So I'm sitting there, and I'm reading this book. It's a good opportunity to learn and read. And this guy's saying, yeah, I remember the first time I got asked to a speaking engagement. It's not my first time, by the way. It's my second today, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, first time I got asked to a speaking engagement, and I noticed he had all these great speakers, and uh, I was last. And I realized he put, you know, last speaker is reserved for the person they didn't have to pay or who begged to get a chance to go up in front of people and speak, right? <laughs> so if I didn't need any more confirmation that, you know, I'm this kid, pick me, I got that on the plane, right? And so I had this, you know, great presentation, an impactful thing. You know, I really thought through it and I got ready. And then we ran out of time. So I kind of just rewrote it. And, and right now I'm in the middle of kind of putting together in the short time we'll have together right now um, what I think is most important uh, instead of that other stuff I worked so long and hard on because it was important for me um, to be able to make a difference. So, um, so Benji. Enthusiasm, absolute, um, you know, your depth of faith is awesome to watch for me, right? Uh, but your enthusiasm is just incredible. Uh, and, and so, you know, what I'm thinking, the marketer in me, while I uh, was watching you and feeling you, was really, um, I want to create a dashboard Benji. I really do. I want a dashboard Benji because no matter what I'm doing, I get in my car. Think about this. As a producer, I'll be in my car every day, whether I'm producing or not. I'm going to be in my car, right? And if I get in my car and dashboard Benji's there, I guarantee you I'm not going to I, I will not fail that day. There's no way I can. I will produce. I will be driven. I will succeed because Dashboard Benji is right there. And he's in front of me. And it's powerful. It's enthusiastic. Benji, not coffee. I mean, I, could, I have a slogan to literally market these things, right? So thank you, man. I mean, it was awesome. And I love that they mentioned you're going to Phoenix because I'm going to have people worthy of your time and a number of people worthy of your time in, in, in a room. And I'm going to beg you to come out there um, and impact them the way you do. And from you, my reflection is no matter how much energy I pour into any interaction with any group of people, I have more. There, there's a higher level. And I was honored to see that today. I mean, who gets a room full of independent contractors to stand up all together and form a complete wall from different organizations? 27 years, I haven't seen anything close to that. Room full of independent contractors. And I'll tell you what, I was motivated, right? I was like, He's going to ask everybody to get up. I felt kind of left out when they were up here, but I'm like, it's cool. The dude doesn't know me yet, but he may call me up one day. I'm good with that. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, but you know what? He starts going anybody, you know? So I'm like, I'm fired up. I want my shot, you know? So I, I'm like, I'm going to be the first one. I, you know, I, I, so I jump up, and I rammed into five other people that jumped up at the exact same moment. So it's not just that the enthusiasm got an entire room full of independent contractors to stand up and form a square, but we were all so excited to do it, we ran into each other. <laughs> Folks, you don't get people like that very often in <laughs> our business. And in 20 years, in a lot of meetings, I saw the first one today, earlier. So thank you for helping me realize that we can all take that enthusiasm up to another level. So I need all of you to answer me. Did that set an example for you of what I mean by take what the speakers gave you and reflect? Do you understand that now? You probably already did, but maybe that gives you a better example. Do you promise to do that for yourselves? By show of hands, please. Thank you. I really, really want you um, to do that.
There's a couple other things that I've got for you, a checklist, right? And that checklist is, um, I want you to draw from within and attach to others. Draw from within and attach to others. And next to others, I want you to write winners. I want you to write winners next to others. And here's why. Because story time. When I got, and by the way, help me stay on track. I need your help more than anything. So I'm begging you for it right now. Just remind me that I'm on number two, draw from uh, within and attach to others. Here's story time. When I got out of the Navy, by the way, quickly, try and get two stories out here. Um, how many of you, when you were growing up on the playground, and Anthony said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And Mike said, I want to be a football player. Ryan said, I want to be a baseball player. How many of you have said, I want to be a life insurance agent? By show of hands. Okay, okay. You, you, yeah. <laughs> raise your hand again. I wanted the camera over there. Daniel, raise your hand again. Right? Now, now let me correct that for you, because I'm here to help you. I said, how many of you said you wanted to, not were told you were going to be to, or felt compelled you had to, because your father was an icon, right? But I think it's, it's a great reflection on a company and an organization when a father's sons, uh, plural, follow in his footsteps and are here to take the organization to an even higher level, and I know you will. You know, and I, I like being a part of an organization like that. I think that's a, a great reflection. So, okay, so checklist number one. We clarified that we didn't say we wanted to do this when we were on the playground. So number two, when we went to college, for those who did, because um, I didn't, you know, I started to, and I goofed off all the time, and so I went into the Navy, because then I'd really know what I wanted to be, because I didn't know what I wanted to be at the point in time I was in college, and I came out of the Navy, and I knew it when I was getting out. I was like, man, I know what I'm going to be. I'm sailing out on the high seas. I'm visiting foreign countries, and this great realization hits me. I want to be a life insurance agent, right? That's exactly how it went down. Sure. No. <laughs> not, not even close, right? I was still in the mindset I was going to be a football player. So, so, so when we went to school, how many of you went to college for a degree in life insurance or insurance? There's actually an insurance degree, by the way. You can get it. Most of you already have a PhD in it. So, so we didn't do that. All right. So I was getting out of the Navy, 24 years old, going to be in commercial real estate because I liked working with people, like being outside. I can't sit behind a desk. I want to be active, right? You know, um, ADD, right? I, I believe I have it, but I'm old enough that in my day they called it multitasking and it was actually a compliment, right? <laughs> Whereas today, <laughs> today they, they try and medicate the future us's, you know? I mean, and, and I mean that with all due respect, you yeah, know no, that. But seriously, it was like, yeah, he's a multitasker. What a great guy, you know? Sometimes it is good to be born as, earlier as, we wa as, as early as I was. So, uh, so I'm getting ready to get out, time to get out, going to get into uh, commercial real estate. I'm all fired up to look into it. Oh, yeah, you got to have a two-year degree, an AA degree, plus you got to intern for, for two years. An intern is nothing but free labor. So since Uncle Sam won't pay me because I'm not defending the country anymore, um, I, had to get a, I had to generate money. So I'm frustrated. So I was living in an apartment at the time. The guy down below says, so you're getting out. I was like, yeah. He goes, what are you going to do when you get out? And I told him that. He goes, oh, yeah, bummer. He goes, hey, you, ever, you ever thought about life insurance sales? I'm like, no. <laughs> and, and he goes, well, here's what I made last week. I've been doing it for a couple of years since I got out of the Air Force. And he showed me his check. It was 2500 yeah, 2400 and change. Not quite $2,500, right? And I was like, last week? And he said, yeah. Well, I was an E5, and I had hazard duty pay and all these other things I volunteered for because I got bored in the service. I was making about 32000 a year. So that was almost a month's pay in one week. And so I said to him what every one of you in that moment would have said. Life insurance, huh? You know, I've been thinking a lot about getting into that business. <laughs> How does it work? Right? So I got into it. Or 
27 years later, as I sit here today and look back, I think maybe, just maybe, I was driven into it. Maybe, just maybe, I haven't driven this car as much as I've been along for this ride. And the further I get along and the more I start to realize that's what's happening, the more amazing people are coming into my life and the cooler all of this is getting. And I want that for all of you. And some of you are experiencing it on some level right now. And if others will open up, you'll experience it too. Um, and, I, and I want that to happen for all of you. So um, got into the business. Uh, that's how I got into the business. And it, it literally led to um, everything else. So with that said, I'm willing to bet that all of you have a story very similar to mine as to how you ended up sitting here today, right? And that story's called divine intervention. You're here because you're supposed to be here. And, and I'm probably not worthy of it at this point in my life. Um, but I'm going to reflect on something Benji said earlier. If, if you walk in place, people pass you. And he mentioned that the Lord never slows down and has a plan for everything and everyone. And I thought about that. And I thought about all of us being here right now. I thought about divine intervention. I thought about all of us being put in a chair. You know, you all get put in here. And, and I see them like, okay, everybody, here's your shot. And whatever you do with this is going to impact lives. Not just from the producers you bring in, but from the consumers they insure. Because a family will die and money's there because that agent was there because you recruited him because you trained him. And two generations later, the money that was there for that family let these kids go to school and discover a cure for this or something for that. And it all started with you sitting in a room right here. I know I went fast, but that's a lot and we don't have a lot of time. That's the impact. That's the greater picture. This is so much more than all of us. But if you just be you and you can sit still and commit to this, and roll with it, that's how it trickles out. And so those that take off with it and run with it, you're running alongside them, right? You're running with them and for them. And those that don't, you'll be out of here. But that's OK as I listen to Benji today, because you know what? You'll just divine intervention is such that you got stuck in another place. And that's where you'll make an impact. So it's, it's OK if people don't make it, because not everybody does in this business. But I will tell you, we're all here for a reason. And it's not by our own choosing, because we all just admitted through that process I went through with us that none of us had a plan to be here on the playground. None of us had a plan to be here in college. None of us had a plan to be here when we were getting out of the Navy or kicked out of the house or doing not bartending anymore or any of those things. We're all put here because we're not driving the car. So let's enjoy the ride and contribute to it a little bit is what I would challenge all of you to do. Start exploring how it is you ended up here, why you're here, and maybe make your mission about doing something while you're here, about becoming something for others while you're here. And if you do that, you'll probably be the next person who gets the number to whatever the number is. Because the number doesn't matter and the money doesn't matter. The ride and the relationship matter. That's what it's about, right? So along the way, OK, got to stay on point on this. All right, naysayers. When I said attach yourself to people and I said put in big letters winners, Right? That's what I meant. Here's why. When I was getting out of the Navy and I announced, yeah, so what are you going to do when you get out, right? You know who asks you what you're going to do when you get out? You know who the first people that ask you what you're going to do when you get out of the service are? You know who they are? The ones that haven't gotten out. The ones that have been in for 8, 10, 12 years. And I thank them for their service, right? But they were like, what are you going to do when you get out? What are you doing? I'm going to go into insurance. Oh, you'll never make it. First words I heard, you'll never make it. How do you like me now? <laughs> <laughs> you'll never make it. Boy, you can't say any words that motivate me more than that. I mean, you can't call down the thunder any stronger than those words right there. So, but, but here's what happens to all of us, and I want to share this with you. I can say, what's your name? 
Stephanie, I can say, Stephanie, you're a great producer. You're going to do a fine job. And your friends tell you that, right? And we can go, oh, thank you, you know. And, and, and we don't take it like really to heart. We're not like, yeah, you know what? I am, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove it even more than I already have. And I thank you for that. And, and I'm attaching to you, right? You're positive. You're a winner. Instead, we dismiss the compliments all too often. But you know what we embrace relentlessly, ridiculously? Say it out loud when you're done yawning. <laughs> Say it out loud. The rejection. We do. He was like, you'll never make it. So, of course, I said, instead of saying, watch me, right? I said, why? Why won't I make it? You're too young. You look like a kid. No one's going to buy from you. Now, of course, this guy was a, a yeoman, basically like a, an accountant for the Navy, a bookkeeper. And he'd only known that out of high school for 12 years, which is fine. But as I look back, he probably didn't have any professional ability to tell me whether I'd succeed or not succeed in this business, right? And yet, because it was a naysayer and negative, I did what we all default to. I was like, why? Who? Give me more knowledge, person of no knowledge, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let me seek more from the dry, sand-filled fountain of knowledge of you that you have in insurance because you've done none, right? <laughs> so I'm like, why? And he goes, you look too young. And so I'm thinking, I do, I look too young. You know what I need to do? I need to go immediately to the store, and I need to buy that stuff that you put in your hair that makes it look like it looks right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> it makes it look this way, and I need glasses. Just clear glasses, because then I'll look older, and people will buy from me. And I'll tell you what's cool. I didn't do that. But it shows you the impact naysayers can have, even when you're sure of what you're doing and you're confident. And you have to be aware of that chiseling from the outside, those that want to break you down. They don't sometimes even mean it, but they can't help it. Because you know what? It was never about you. It was always all about them. So what's funny is 27 years later, and with what some would call amazing success, I call it the first point in the steps to real success, which are, which are about, uh, about to happen in the coming years. But it's funny because I blink my eyes, and 27 years have gone by, and what I do now is I buy the stuff that turns my hair back to brown, and I'm in denial that I truly do need glasses because I have to hold this out here just to see my notes, right? And that's the cool thing, is if you're having fun, it goes fast. So um, draw from within and attach to others. Ignore the naysayers and embrace winners. We all do it. It's OK. And it's important to recognize it so that you don't find yourself in it. If I'm, if, if I'm walking along and I recognize the hole and I'm susceptible to falling into it, I need to be aware of that so I can walk around it. And if I think I'm walking around it and I find myself in it again, the next time I see it, I need to cross the street. And if I find myself in it again, I need to walk down another block. So avoiding naysayers is a work in progress. And it's a lifetime's worth of work. And it's fun to have lifetime's worth of work because it's no fun if you ever stop learning. So you can handle whatever you are given and already have handled pain in your life, loss in your life, things that you've had to handle that were tough at the time and you've endured. You've handled them, right? So you can handle this all day long. Embrace it. Dominate it. You can handle rejection. You can handle the no's. You can handle all those things. You're capable. Reflect on what you've already handled and know you're not given anything that you can't handle or you wouldn't be given it. Embrace now. You're here right now, so look, you might as well open your eyes to it and wrap your arms around it. Since you're here, why not be completely here? Why not get the most out of being here, right? And lastly, I would say do it for reasons other than the money. And let me tell you why. I mean, I know a lot of you already know this. And what I think is 
been the greatest experience for me to be with this amazing group of people and to be able to be a part and then with Scotty's um, request to be able to share is that I'm compelled to share. I had a lot more I'd cover with you today and other things I was going to share. Um, they're impactful, perhaps another day and another time, right? And perhaps I can hear some of your successes um, that next time, right? But that you've amassed and accomplished since now because that's what motivates me. I want to hear how you've won, how you've turned a corner, how you flicked the naysayer away, how you embraced a winner even stronger and gave them something back that they could win with, right? So here's what I will share with you. Do it for reasons other than the money, and the money will come beyond your wildest dreams. When I was 24 years old and got out of the Navy, if you would have offered me $100,000 a year salary, because when you talk to agents today, when you recruit an agent, and you say, well, you know, what's your income goal? Number one answer, 100,000, yeah, 100, 100 grand, 100,000 dollars a year. What do you make, what's the most you've ever made in a year? 22. <laughs> It's funny because it's true, right? So 100 grand, 100 grand, 100 grand. Why don't we get you into a program where you're your, own, you're your own boss, you can set a schedule, we give you a system, you're helping people, and let's say you make double your best year ever. You make 40 grand first year, and then we get you to 100, right? But everybody says the same thing. But 100 grand is the benchmark, and 27 years ago. So my goal would have been, I want to make $100,000 a year, right? And, and if somebody would have offered me a salary. Hey Mike, we're going to give you a salary for 100 grand a year. We want you to sign a 40-year contract, 25 to 65. Done. I'm in. You're never going to get a pay raise. Don't need it. 100 grand was the number, right? We haven't even told you what you're going to do. Doesn't matter. $100,000, right? And the reason I share that with you is because if the goal was 100,000, I never would have made a million. And if, so, if I would have just happened onto a million dollars, I would have pissed it away in a heartbeat. Because I wouldn't have understood how it came to me, and therefore I wouldn't have been capable of handling it. I would have been scared. People are afraid to admit they're scared. You take someone from 50 grand and you drop a million dollars in their pocket, they go right to the penthouse and they, they blow it because they're scared. They're afraid of it, and so they do things to undermine it. They don't know how it happened. And they're so afraid it's going to go away, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So monetary goals are great, but helping goals and passion goals and difference-making goals will bring you the money beyond any monetary goal you would set. And what happens if your goal is 100000 and you hit it. Inevitably, what do you do? You plateau. You stop, right? A lot of people say, I want to be a millionaire. Cool. So you, once you make a million dollars, you quit. You hang it up. You know, you, you just die. Here lies the guy that made a million bucks, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> it's not going to go that way. So it can't be about the money. It's got to be about the mission. And thanks to Brandon, it's got to be about the movement. Not only that I'm starting, but that I'm a part of, right? So I'll tell you about how I got gutted and burned down and started over and took nothing with me and got to right at about 15 million a year of premium on the life side in my uh, about third or fourth year some other time because I promised you I, I would condense this and not too, take too much time. So I wanted to leave you with the please change your monetary goal to a goal that's not about the money and just keep that dollar number tucked away somewhere and promise me not to look at it again and do it for the passion, the movement, the mission, your joy and then see where it gets you because what will happen is you'll pass through 100,000 and then it's 180, and then it's 290, and then it's 410, and then it's 600. And what's funny is, you're not even looking. It's just tax time, and they're like, okay, well, here's what you made this year. And you're like, whew, okay, whatever, I'm busy. I got agents to work with, I got places to build, I got people to see, I love what I'm doing. So you don't really pay attention to that because that's not what it's about. You're having fun, you're making a difference, right? And you're getting, you're getting as well as giving because people are succeeding. 
You make people successful and it lifts you to a level of success that you could not get to without them. That's why it's all about the producer. It always has been, it always will be, and the highest of highest levels of people have to stay connected to that in our business. And then it's 750, and then it's 820, and then it's a million. And you know what, when it was a million, you don't stop because the number never mattered. But you know what else you don't do? Freak out and burn yourself down. You don't piss it all away because you got rich slowly. And really, so much more than getting rich, you got enriched. And you enriched back. And that never goes away. You can't spend all that. You can't go broke on that. It doesn't take money for that, but you get lots of money when you invest in that. Invest in you, investing in people, and accept their investment in you back, and watch the wealth grow. Here, here, and sure, you know, woohoo, big deal, right? And what's really cool is when you look at the foundation you built to actually get there, you don't freak out and you don't see it as a shock because it could have been a billion dollars a year. Is that mini me? <laughs> right? It doesn't friggin' matter. And let me help you all with something else. The greatest gift you get from achieving that is impacting the lives you impact and having them impact yours. Because when you get to the top of that mountain of incredible wealth, all the answers you thought would be there, all the acceptance you thought you might get, there's nothing there. And that's why they say it's lonely at the top. It's lonely at the top for those that didn't pay attention to how they got there or got there the wrong way. That's where it's lonely. It's, it's warm and cozy and loving at the top. And this is the top, folks. So I thank you for your time. I thank you for your attention. I know it's been a long day. And I look forward to seeing all of you succeed. Appreciate it. Thank you.